from KSL Broadcast House. This is Sunday Edition with the Deseret News and KSL. Good morning and welcome to Sunday Edition. I'm Danny Wimmer. We're focusing on education this morning and we begin with an initiative that is getting a lot of attention. The group Our Schools Now says it's seen no real action from lawmakers, so they're going to take their plan for more money for education directly to voters. Political specialist Lad Egan reports on the details of the plan and its high profile support. I homeschooled a grandson because I didn't want to send him to public school. I knew he'd get lost. Utah businesswoman Gail Miller says she's experienced firsthand what happens to families when too few dollars are spent on education. Because the attention would not be there for him. He was ADD, the class sizes were way too big, and I knew that he wouldn't get what he needed. Miller says the changes to education funding need to be significant, especially with Utah's growing population. We just want to look at it as getting the job done. We have to get something done to make our schools better. So we are full steam ahead with a ballot initiative and we will be on the ballot in November of 2018. That's where Our Schools Now enters, asking voters to increase the state income tax by seven-eighths of a percent to go directly to education. The group is open to lawmakers coming up with a legislative solution, but says lawmakers aren't acting. What we're focused on is education funding and what they're doing right now is not going to solve the problem with education funding. In education, funding is not the issue. The Libertas Institute is against raising the income tax for education, saying more money won't solve the problems. When you look at funding, there is very little correlation between the amount that you spend on public education and outcomes. Very little. That was Lad Egan reporting. Joining me to discuss this initiative more in depth, Austin Cox with Education First and Evelyn, Ever uh, Evelyn Everton, excuse me, Director for Americans for Prosperity. Uh, first off, uh, Evelyn, we didn't get a chance to hear from you. T explain to me why your group opposes this initiative. Yeah, I think our biggest concern is when you look at the income tax, it really is a driver of our economy. In 2008, John Huntsman, our governor, then um, cut income tax from 7% to 5%. And I think we've seen an explosion of economic growth in our state. I mean, just in 2016, uh, we created 49,000 new jobs here in our state and so our concern is if we if we raise income tax then you're, you're gonna see actually businesses and individuals leave our state to really find tax relief in our surrounding neighboring states that have a lower income tax rate. Now we want to talk a little bit more about this income tax issue because a poll by the Libertas Institute showed 50 percent of likely voters support raising the income tax rate to 5.875 percent for education but when told that it would mean the average family would spend about $900 more in taxes every year, 69% said they were less likely to support it. So Austin, what's your response to that? Yeah, I think when we are talking about polling, we need to look at polls over the course of the last several years. And there are a lot of polls specifically to our proposal, as well as from groups like Envision Utah and uh, Utah Foundation that show education's a big issue. Uh, we're confident in the support we have. We've done polling that shows 89% of Utahns believe we spend too little on education. And so we're confident, and as this campaign unfolds, we're confident that we'll find more support as we go. So you're saying this is a, a more of a wording issue, that the support, the, the ground well for support for education is there. We've heard that support. We've heard from parents. We've heard from teachers. We've heard from businesses. I think Evelyn and I, or the groups we represent, both uh, agree that we need to do policies that are going to benefit our economy. And we feel, the business leaders supporting us, feel that by investing in education, we'll do that. Okay, so Evelyn, if not, if not a tax increase, state tax increase, how would we fund education? Well, I think we need to actually um, make sure that when we're having this discussion about education that we're not getting so bogged down in this per pupil spending, but we're actually looking at outcomes. I mean, when we when we ex expect our policymakers to, to create legislation, we want to know that there's going to be a beneficial outcome as well as what they're spent on the program. So you look at um, Utah, we're in the middle of PAC and of, of overall testing scores. Um, we're number one for eighth grade science scores. We're number eight for fourth grade science scores. Um, so clearly the money that we're spending right now, we're doing something right with that. We're having um, those, those good education outcomes and, and good test scores here in our state. Middle of the pack though. So would you say that's not good enough? That's where I would jump in and say comparing ourselves to other states that aren't doing that well isn't something that we should hold or the, we should have higher standards than that. Uh, we're, the America is falling behind the rest of the world in our educational outputs and so just comparing ourselves to the other 49 states isn't doing our children a lot of good. Evelyn, you talk about uh, what I'm hearing, accountability, you know, making sure that what we're doing is, is working, first of all, but are you saying that we don't need more money for education or where would you 
get it if, if you are saying that, that schools need more money. I, mean, I think the reality is, is that we have 600,000 school-age children in our state. I mean, we have and more growing. kids. Right. We have more kids in our state. Um, you know, it's a great thing. We have, we have you know, big families here in Utah. And so we have to really look at that and understand that our, the needs that we have here in Utah are different from our surrounding states. Um, we can't tax our way out of this. I mean, if we want to be number one in per-pupil spending, we're going to have to raise our income tax to something like 11%. Mm -hmm. We would be second to California in highest taxes. I mean, people are leaving California in droves because of the tax burden is so high there. We don't want to do that. And so I think we need more innovative out-of-the-box solutions. If we can't tax our way there, then we've got to actually look at what we're spending, make sure we're actually spending it in the most effective way, make sure it's getting to the classrooms. We're not spending it on, on these elaborate school buildings or it's being absorbed into administrative costs. We want to make sure it's getting to the teachers and just make sure what we're already spending now is being spent efficiently before we ask Utah families to spend more. One question I wanted to ask you, Austin, um, your group has worked with Utah Foundation and they did mm -hmm. some research that showed um, recent changes to tax laws in recent years, um, including the tax cut that you mentioned, Evelyn, um, have actually cut education money over years by millions and millions of dollars. Do you think most people uh, realize that and, and is this uh, your group's way to, to I guess, fix that, address that? Well, I think it brought the decreases to education funding to the forefront, right? If we're going to continue to grow our economy and sustain it and grow, then we're going to need to invest in education, along with other things, but education first and foremost. Um, our proposal would take $750 more million into education. That would take us from 50th to 49th. And so we're not proposing an 11% personal income tax. We're proposing a 7-8% of 1% or 7 eighths of 1% income tax. That would take us from 50th to 49th. On the face of it, the legislature is working and looking at hundreds of thousands of new dollars and millions of new dollars for education. On the face of it, that sounds like a lot of money. Um, Evelyn, is, is, is it enough with your group? Would you rather see them go with that and continue these incremental increases and find, like you said, innovation, innovative ways to use that money? Um, your group is looking at, we're tired of the incremental increases. Discuss, I guess, why now? Why we need to do something this drastic now? Well, I think we need to actually, I mean, look at what the legislature has allocated towards education. We went from 2013 spending about $3 billion in education from the state. Now we're at $4 billion. So clearly, that's a billion dollars over the last few years that they have been allocating towards education. They're taking this very seriously. They, they absolutely believe in education as much as It's not like the, the state's of. not making an effort that's to. Exactly right. And so what I think that they are very, um, you know, concerned about our economy and concerned that if we actually do tax, cut taxes, we're going to actually see people leave and businesses leave and taking their tax dollars with them. And that hurts education anyways. And that billion dollars that she's referring to largely goes to new students, goes to higher education, and it goes to inflation. So when you're looking at that billion, it's really only 2% that makes it to new student programs and new, stu and new ways to reach our students. And we're not going to increase our outputs that we all care about, student achievement, by 2% new funding. So um, there's a lot th that we still need to do. And we think that instead of forcing business away, this will really drive businesses to Utah. I think we all, the, both of you agree, education is so important and um, closely being watched at the, on the Hill. So we'll see where this leads. Your group's moving forward. We're moving forward. We're going to uh, work this summer to qualify for the ballot in November of 2018. That'll require more than 100,000 signatures. You can go to ourschoolsnow.com and find out more and see how you can help. Right. Austin and Evelyn, we appreciate your insights on Thank this important you. topic. Thank you. Thank you.